Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Today we're at it again. Today's subject, Coral Rock from Homestead, Florida. The same vein base as Ed Lee Scallon from Coral Castle. I just cut this piece in half with a sawzall. First I tried a metal blade. I tried it slow. I tried it fast. And it, you can see, I got a cut, but then all of a sudden, mm, didn't work out too well. And then from right about here, it broke off. And I changed to a wood blade after a metal blade and it dug in a little bit more and I got from say about here down to here then it broke off so um, on Ed cutting his rock coral rock I'm gonna have to conclude that um, if he did reciprocate it back and forth this is me doing it with my hands and my time. And if he set it up to where he had a machine rocking it back and forth like a rope reciprocating, um, then I would say that uh, possibly with the right weight and if it was just going by slow back and forth, slow back and forth, and it, I guess it, you know, just pulling like this, it could, you know, a wire, probably not going to do it. Some type of, some type of bandsaw blade um, might do the trick, but I, I don't know what was available back then. So, um, on any methods of Ed's cutting the rock, like a straight line to make a square, um, need some in further investigation. But uh, today's video was not all about me cutting the rock, but I think that's a major, major important part of uh, how Coral Castle got built uh, is to know how. But we're going to mess with static because I feel that Mr. Ed Lee Scallon knew a lot about static. And we're going to throw some boulders and this is just all dust that came off from the coral rock there. We're going to come over here. And what are we going to do? We're going to have to, I guess, charge the wheel. Let's get a little build up here. I got the probes far apart. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and... I can already see that uh, some of the coral material is being pulled towards the round metal ring there. And let's go ahead and hopefully that's a good view for you guys. Let's bring it closer. Oh yeah, can you guys see it pulling? vibrating the big rock I don't know if you guys can see that but the bigger boulder that's on here was just vibrating vibrating this adds some validity to Ed Lee Scallon's levitation of rocks um, this is the material from the coral I'm going to scooch it all over now and I am going to see what materials move towards it, okay? Now let's get a little fresh, little charge, in case the wall setting while it's jabbing. This gives validity. Oh yeah, look at that strength pulling.
Now that's that one plate on one side. Let's go over here and see what we have on the other side. She's pulling. It's not as strong. So. This plate here. It seems to be throwing it away more than pulling. It's pulling a little bit, but this side here is pulling it. So, that is crazy. Look at the influence that the static has over this material. Major, major, major. That one's shaking. That boulder, big boulder is shaking over there. There's a vibration. That end one right there, when you pull away, it kind of shakes. Hmm. So, based on these minor experiments, I'm thinking that um, we're going to have to investigate here. We're going to have to dig into it a little bit deeper. We're going to have to see how this static... We'd see the effects on the coral dust powder, little rocks, right? And it's lifting it up on one plate, and the other plate, it's not. It's repelling it. So if we want it to take some of the weight off of that whole big square piece that he cut, we would want to take the same charge from this plate, and we would want to... Um, Definitely, definitely want to use that for lifting purposes. You know what I mean, guys? It's all about the damn static, man. And the more I mess with it, the more I learn. You guys should get yourself one. If not make one, I'll be making one of these. Well, actually, I'm designing it right now. And it's gonna be and it's gonna be more like uh, um, uh, Wilhelm Reich ish, to where the materials that are on there uh, matter, and the also a brushless system that you'll need a little igniter to get the the whole wheel charged up and once it's charged it stays charged that's cool dude that's real cool so anyway uh thanks for watching uh coral rock huh so yeah that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking uh i'm gonna do a video i'm gonna get uh edge wheel turning with the with the uh, solenoid system and we're going to make that efficient once we get it turning and we're going to use the Scott Russell mechanism and we're going to use the pipe coming out of the ground we're going to put a coil on the inside of it like Ed says you know for no energy loss great for pulling purposes so we're going to have it pulling up and down and with the Scott Russell mechanism. If you guys don't know anything about it, just look it up on Wikipedia. And it's back in the 1800s. This guy, Scott Russell, which I have a friend out there, shout out to my boy Scott Russell. Um, <laughs> it's crazy to have your name in something that's a mechanism that uh, takes a, a vertical and planes off to a horizontal 
Um, so I could use the solenoid by doing that, and I can definitely turn the wheel with that. So we're, we're working on that now, hard. And um, uh, I, I didn't mean to jump out of the static, but uh, as I'm playing with Ed's wheel, trying to get this mechanism designed on paper, then build it. But I'm experimenting in pieces, so you guys will probably appreciate you know, if I take you through little journeys of different things that I need to learn to, to make this right. And that's Scott Russell mechanism. So I got me a little welder. I, you know, I'll do a little welding with my arc welder. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll build the mechanism. I'll build the right coil. The coil will go inside that steel casing that goes to the ground. And it'll lose no energy and basically has tremendous uh, pull strength. So it'll it'll make that wheel uh, go fast or slow, however I adjust it. And on top of that, um, we can build a solenoidal saw. That's a, a re reciprocating saw. And we can cut some of this coral rock and we'll show uh, how Ed uh, could have cut the coral rock. And as, as much as Ed speaks in his magnetic current, uh, in a roundabout way, there's a lot of information there that leads me to think that Ed, um, those cuts going straight down on three sides or even fourth because of the first one, I guess you're, you're, you start, but then you always have the first one done. Um, so you're doing three sides, uh, we're going to find out. We're, we're going to dig deeper. I mean, we're going to get some muriatic acid because he mentions acid. I want to see how acid reacts with this stuff. The inside's like powdery. I don't know if I tell you, but it, it's got like, it's made underneath the ocean. It's, it's made out of um, coral. It, it, it's basically like seashells crushed together. And like it's inside the cavities, you got like, like gypsum, you know, it's soft. And then the cavity is hard. So uh, there's a lot of cavities. Like down here, it's like a little sand pit. Look at that. Dig it in, dig it in. So it's pretty interesting to see, you know, hey, he takes this material, he cuts it. So cutting it like a regular sawzall or anything like that, no. Um, now, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to find out what they had back in 1920, 1915 and 1930 and see where they were with, with blades and stuff like that and how big and stuff because um, somehow he cut straight lines. He cut some straight lines. So what was his, what was his motive? No, well, what was his method? So cool stuff um yeah all right guys all well, static static moves right in here right on top man with this coral it uh definitely makes uh makes things like come up so i'm thinking if we can attract static with that one um side there that uh, one plate and it's attracting the material um I didn't see it throwing material back at all. It just attracted it. Uh, unlike the wood, with the wood you would see charge and uncharge. This, I didn't notice that at all. It definitely had a pulling power about it. So uh, maybe uh, Ed had built up enough static in his wheel system to be able to wrap that um, cable around the rock or into the rock. But that's what we're going to experiment too with this rock. But, you know, we're going to maybe set it up a little bit like he had on the tripod. And maybe he had a, a bar going through it. All right, we got to see what the static does when you start adding shit to it. You know what I mean? It's like you know, like the Slayer. The Slayer, you know, grounds out right away. So it, it, it loses whatever mojo it had in, in re reciprocating 